Now we are going to be reading The Graffiti Writer by Neil Patel. Uh, okay. Exterior NCP car park Blackpool night. Zach Mitchell, 17, short, stocky, holding a spray can, stares intently at a low risk wall. He just needs to add a couple of primary fills and be out. An old man a hundred yards away walking his dog stops and stares. Zach ignores him. He's in control and getting cocky. He pulls out a small black book, his most treasured possession. Zach smiles. It looks like the image in the book. Stop! Do not run! He drops everything and runs like hell across the car park. He looks back, sees a flashlight. Zach has a hundred meters start and has no idea where to run. His heart beat fast and he hears a man screaming in frustration. Zach has a 50 meter lead. We hear sirens. Zach spots a break in the fence. He runs towards it and ends up in a back garden. Exterior back garden continuous. Zach breaks out of a large bush and stands on a perfectly manicured lawn next to a fiber side net. We hear a grrr, then more grrrs. A security light comes on. A large savage black Alsatian lurches towards him. We catch sight of its sharp teeth. Zach grabs the net and throws it. The dog snarls and whines. There's no way to escape. An ear splitting alarm comes on and then a bedroom light comes on. We hear other dogs start to bark. Zach sprints to the front of the house, hurdles over the gates. He sees a police car coming towards him and he crouches behind a black Audi. The police car goes screeching past him, sirens wailing. Zach relaxes and lies on the floor. A big smile appears on his face. Police car breaks and reverses. Zach quickly gets up and hot puts to a narrow alley. It comes to a dead end. He clambers over the wall, lands awkwardly and strains his left ankle. He looks up and claps eyes on the bright lights of Tesco's. Exterior Tesco Metro store continuous. Zach ends up at the back of Tesco's. A white van is unloading stock. Two Albanian women, both in their late 30s, spot him. They're supervising the stock. Zach is totally lacking any energy. His legs are cramping and he slowly limps towards them. Please, hide me. Police after me. Graffiti artist, wall. Please. We, we can't. The second woman is about to say yes. The first woman stops her. The second woman looks apologetic. She stares at Zach like you would look at a wounded animal. Zach hears sirens and slowly trudges off. Run, baby, run, run. Zach only has 10% petrol left in the tank and is scared. Not far off, he spots a loading dock for a trailer. The trailer is occupied by a gigantic industrial machine. Zach limps inside and with just enough energy proceeds to collapse behind the machine. Zach painfully stuffs his legs and body underneath it. It's an incredibly small space, but he manages to make it. He cannot keep still. He has ants in his pants. He hears the sound of a rat scurrying around. The place is covered in trash. It smells musty and rotten. Zach nearly vomits on himself. The police car arrives. Two policemen get out and speak to the two Albanian women. Both nod their heads in unison and point at the opposite direction to where Zach came from. They pretend not to understand any English. The two policemen are fuming. They know they're lying because they just came from that direction. Zach waits 20 minutes. He can hardly move anyway. He takes a peek. The coast is finally clear. He limps home, reaches in his pocket for his book, but cannot find it. Interior Zach's grandmother's house later that night. Zach approaches the modest house and unlocks the front door. He takes his shoes off, trudges upstairs and stops. He opens his grandmother's late 80s bedroom door and makes sure she's still breathing. On the bedside table, a framed photo of an eight-year-old Zach smiling with a kind, gentle man in his 40s, Zach's dead dad, both happily covered in paint, an obvious influence on Zach like father, like son. Interior, principal's office, North Shore College, morning. Mr. Woodcock, 45, the principal, slams Zach's black book on the table. Close up on a laptop, it's CCTV footage of Zach throwing a football net at a dog. What's got into you, man? Nothing. Nothing? You just decided to act like a complete idiot. Next to Zach is Zach's mum, Beverly, 45, overworked, underpaid, and struggling single parent, still grieving the recent death of her husband. Mr. Woodcock stares at Beverly. How can I be possible? I was looking over time last night. The rent's gone off and it's due next week. Slight pause. Mr. Woodcock stares at Zach. 
think about the consequences of your actions. Zach doesn't say anything. Don't bury your head in the sand. This is a big year for you. I've tried talking to him. I'm trying really hard. He's a quiet child and he's being bullied. We take bullying seriously. The school are doing nothing about it. He needs help. We can arrange for Zach to speak to the college counsellor. We can give him the help he needs. Beverly sighs, Mr Woodcock, and hands him the Zach, hands him the black book. Zach's happy. Well, at least he didn't try and burn the college down. Both Zach and Mr Woodcock stare at Beverly. That was over 25 years ago. Christ, why are you always talking about that? Look, I'll talk to him. Let's catch up in a couple of weeks. Zach and Beverly leave the principal's office. Interior, college corridor, continuous. A group of students stare at an iPhone. They giggle and point at Zach. Zach wishes he could disappear. Proud of yourself? Zach's eyes roll. He refuses to talk. He wishes it was his mum in that car instead of his dad. He wanders off in the opposite direction. Beverly walks the opposite way and exits the school. Interior, college canteen, noon. Zach is eating sandwiches next to a group of students aged 17, 18. Kane Morrison, the intimidating college bully, 18, acne-ridden, badly bruised, knuckles, fronts up to Zach. What's up, player? Contacted your dad on the Ouija board last night. Wanted to wish him a happy birthday. Oh, no. Everyone knows about you now. Kane backhands Zach across the face, giving him a bloody nose. They start scuffling, the sandwiches go flying. Fight, 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 fight. fight. Bye. You want some more? Mobile phones come out and start recording, except one person. Michelle, 18, Chinese, short, athletic, vaping, backpack over her shoulder and twirling a lanyard round her finger. Gone, Zach. Zach holds his own impressively against the bigger lad. Michelle takes a long vape drag. I wouldn't have this ugly idiot on my Insta. Huge students laugh. Kane loses focus. Shut it, you slag, or you're next. If I'm a slag, what's your mum? Michelle takes off her backpack and throws the backpack towards Zach, who deftly ducks beneath it and smacks Kane full in the face. Kane staggers back and then lunges forward, grabs Michelle's shirt. Zach sees an opening and sucker punches Zach. It's a melee. All three of them get stuck in. Mr Johnson, math teacher, late 40s, approaches the fight and is faced with a scene of chaos. Stop! Mr. Johnson goes in, breaks it up, and brings everything under control. Up against the wall, the three of them line up. Mobile phone cameras are still recording. Zach, Michelle, and Kane find it funny. This is not funny. See my face? I am not laughing. This is not humorous. If I want to see someone funny, I go to see a comedian. The principal's office now. Interior principal's office reception moments later. Zach and Michelle are squashed together on a small couch. Michelle's tapping away on her Nintendo Switch and live streaming. A can of monster energy drink is on the table. Oh my God, come on, come on. Oh, look at that drift queen. What? No. I'm on the gravel now. Oh God, what the hell hit me? How embarrassing. Should never have played, what a disaster. Michelle picks up the can and takes a large gulp and slams it on the table. Senior stuff. Wow. You should get paid for it. Then you can get one of these. Michelle waves the Nintendo Switch in Zach's face. Ha uh ha. -huh. I'm not joking. You're 18 soon. You gotta make some plans, mate. She makes a hand gesture for money, rubbing her thumb against the index and middle finger. Any money makes plans? What's your plans? Professional esports gamer. My foster parents wanted to ban me until I won a grand. A grand? Got 15 kills on Fortnite. Would have been 16, but got ambushed by some guy in a shed. Now, now they make, make sure I'm ready for the tournaments. The principal's door opens. Kane comes out and gives Zach the death stare. Michelle carries on playing. Yo, chill out, kill switch. Stop having wet dreams and no Iron Man. I don't have an OnlyFans account. Mr. Woodcock stares at Michelle and is irritated. Michelle, you are spending too much time on that thing. Exams next week. 
Shh, no game's about to start. I need to massacre a few virgin boys. Yeah? Don't tell me to shush. Michelle ignores Mr. Woodcock and stares at the gaming console. Is game finished licking your backside yet? Mr. Woodcock sighs and rolls his eyes. Oh, dear. Now you're suspended. Busted. So I get to go home now. Yeah. Well, that's entirely up to you, Michelle. Once I've spoken to Zach, I'll phone your mum and inform her you've been suspended. Michelle downs the can, grabs her rucksack, walks off and continues playing. Zach trudges into the office. Interior principal's office continuous. Mr. Wilcox sits down and writes out a suspension slip. This is how it's going to go down. I'm going to suspend you. He came up to me. He grabbed me. It makes no sense. We have rules and boundaries, Zach. We have to stand by those rules. Give me your black book. Why? You're getting an ASBO. You'll be banned from touching any spray paints. How long for? Depends on the court. Zach reluctantly hands over his black book and leaves the office. The ASBO is to protect other people from your antisocial behaviour. Looks ugly anyway. Mr Woodcock picks up the phone and calls Michelle's mum. Exterior, Mr Shiny Car Wash, same time. Two burly Romanian women, men, what, sorry for that. Two burly Romanian men wash a black golf TDI. Behind the wheel is Patrick McCann, 23, lean, hard, born and bred in the East End. We hear a knock on the window. Patrick holds down the button and the window rolls down. He is nose to nose with Davy Campbell, an S ex SAS officer, Scottish, 50 years old, a tattooed man, shaven head, wearing Ray Bans. Hey, man, how you doing? You okay? Patrick smiles and bumps fists. It's a great honor to work for you. Dad was always talking about you. Davy gives Patrick the thumbs up. He was one of the best. I've worked with a fighter. Patrick bursts with pride. Davy chucks a brown package about the size of a brick into the passenger seat. It's real. The shipment's arrived. He then tosses £2,500 in rolled up notes on his lap. Patrick eyeballs the money and seems pumped. We need fresh blood for the drugs line. If the Salford gang want to war, we'll give it to them. We're going to hit them all. You're not afraid, are you? Patrick grins and shakes his head. If you want to get to the top like your father, you can't be the Prince Charming. You have to be the beast. We need to move fast. Come on it. Amazing to have you on board. I'll see you soon. Davy laughs and claps his hands. Patrick rolls the window up and drives off. And that's the end of our excerpt. Perfect. Thank you. So... Thoughts on that? Uh, John? Uh, well, first thing, he seems to be very good at naming the cars, but not very very good at naming the ancillary players. You know, the car's very descriptive. Black Audi, you know, Golf GTI or whatever. But, you know, you've got people talking on the scene. They need a name. Well written, other than that. Uh, intrigued. Basically, just to find out what the hell it's all about. Uh, not really a lot more I can say at the moment without reading it again. Because this was a cold read for me. Yeah, it was for me. Uh, okay, um, uh, Rachel. Yeah, um, I like the action at the start. So obviously we read different scripts in this group and sometimes we have to say to people get that explosion at the start get that bank robbery at the start whatever you do go straight in there and it's nice I think you could actually cut some of your stage directions a little bit and make it a bit snappier because there's some really exciting things going on here for some of these characters but I think they could probably be a little bit quicker mm. um I like the character of Michelle um I think uh, I initially thought until this last page oh it's going to be really relatable for you know, teenage 20s, 30s sort of audience. And then you brought these 
these two guys in that are older characters and I'm like oh okay maybe you're trying to appeal to everyone I like that but the stuff with the monster and the Nintendo Switch and everything like <laughs> you know that's a particular generation and I think they will like that um I was intrigued by the brand package and the money at the end as well which was good um yeah it's a nice it's a nice script um keep it up thank you Erin I wish I read it all through before we read it because um, it was really good, really, really well written, really interesting. I don't, I think it feels like a series, but I don't know. Um, I like the fact that it seems like the principal and the mother, Zach's mom, know each other from the past. I like that a lot because I'm like, I need to know more about this. I hope something happens with that. And um yeah, I like how it seems to have a lot of different players and a lot of different ages, which is really interesting. So I wish, yeah, I, wa I want to know more. It's really good, really interesting, really well done. Thanks. So, Stuart? Um, I think I echo everybody's thoughts. Um, I, I thought there was a lot of description in there about what was going on. It was almost like... Um, it was like a it was like a running order <laughs> if you like of um of what was going on the chase scene and things and i can see why you want to describe it but it it just felt quite a lot to get through before we get started with the script as in dialogue um there was also one point where it said and i noted it down where it says he waits 20 minutes before he moves and i thought well, how are you going to show that on screen without boring everybody and literally waiting 20 minutes? Or are you going to have him, have his watch, you know, changing round or something? Uh, but I just thought, ah, what, why did you, why did you put that? You know, why you just have 20 minutes later or something. Or, mm. um, so the, that jumped out to me. Uh, I did, I really like the, the school environment and as, um, uh, Erin said about the mother having a backstory at the school and that went down in history, obviously. Um, and um, and I, I actually found the kind of, not that I've been in school recently, but <laughs> I found it quite realistic. I, I it jumped out as to me as quite realistic, the <coughs> banter of school and the fights mm. going on and things. It sounds like my my teenager's school at the moment um so uh that you know i i thought ah the writers the writers quite young and sort of got that recent experience of teachers or something that jump that you know i was jumping to that conclusion i don't know whether it's right but it it felt very realistic to me um and yes like others i wanted to know more and interesting why these two people start talking about drug deals and Salford gangs and things at the end and where that's going to go so um is he going to be involved you know is that going to get involved in the drugs dealing or county lines type thing is this is this one of those stories or is it is it something else or is it about him dealing with his past and his father dying you know i was kind of i was literally jumping around thinking oh where's this where's this going so yeah good and um interesting cool. an interesting story yeah going back to that thing about the good two guys that come in at the end the, the as i was reading it the thing that went through my head was why is the why are you signaling that this is about drugs why have you actually put that into dialogue um because it would you wouldn't normally if that was normal dialogue and those two characters know what they're doing. They don't need to tell each other this is drugs, this is the drug money, this is the gang, this is the and that and and if you exclude those things from dialogue, that's your explaining to the audience. But if you exclude that from the audience, then the, that makes the audience come even deeper into the story because it makes them want to know what's going on. So so they're just little tiny things like that. It doesn't take much. Just have them discuss it so that you're thinking, oh, what the hell's going on here? Okay. These what are these two guys doing? You know, that the, the, the there was one thing that stood out to me on page three where you've got interior Zach's grandmother's house later that night, and then you've got him outside. Zach approaches the modest house and unlocks the front door. I know what you mean to do. What you mean is we're inside the house and he's approaching the door and unlocks it from the outside. But you have to find a way to, if you want to show him approaching the door, he's got to be a glass door that we see him through, or you have to 
hear him put the key in the lock or something and we're just standing there. You have to explain it how you want us to see it, not just he's approaching the door from the outside. Otherwise, you've got to do an exterior first. There is just a little tiny thing like that, you know, that um, other than that, I liked the school stuff as well. I think that was brilliant. That flowed really well. And I think Michelle was a great character. And um, and the dialogue was really was really good. And again, yeah, I love the backstory that she's got. So Beverly's got history. Um, uh, probably he was her headmaster or teacher or something, you know, and um, I like that. And I, but those are the things I want to know where it's going. And these two guys at the end, I'm not sure about at the moment, but yeah, it would be worth finding out and reading on. So yeah, good script. Thank you.